So, what's the difference between the RC Pro controller and the RC N1 controller? Does the RC Pro controller have more buttons? Will you get more range on the RC Pro controller? Which controller has the brighter screen and can get you flying quicker? And ultimately, is the RC Pro controller really worth that $1200 upgrade? Let's find out! The home port has been updated. Please check it on the map. First up is range. According to DJI, both these controllers are running Ocusync 3.0, which during perfect conditions will give you a transmission range of 15 kilometers. This test is not going to be very convoluted. We're just going to fly straight in one direction until we lose connection or until the app tells us that we're running low on battery and that we'll have to turn back. And then we're going to repeat it with the other controller with a fresh battery on the Mavic 3. Now, while the range test is going on, let me tell you about the physical differences between these two controllers. The obvious difference here is that the RC Pro controller comes with a display while the RC N1 doesn't, which means you will always have to fumble around with your smartphone while trying to attach it to the controller, which means it will take a little bit longer to set up before you can start flying. With the RC Pro, you'll only need to screw in these two control sticks and we managed to do that in under 20 seconds. As for setting up the RC N1, we did that in under 35 seconds. Now I have flown in a lot of sketchy places where sometimes being able to set up quickly and not draw attention is priority. So I do appreciate this ninja-like capability of the RC Pro controller to set up and get your drone in the air quickly before anyone catches on. Now the downside of having your smartphone as the display is that you don't have your smartphone when you're flying and you may be getting pesky notifications and even a phone call coming through when you forget to turn on your do not disturb mode. And then sometimes the smartphone display just isn't that bright enough to see under sunny situations. DJI claims that their display on the RC Pro controller is capable of a thousand nits, which is like really bright. And if you have this iPhone 13 Pro, its display is also capable of a thousand nits. So in this test, we've set both screen to full brightness and we're using a lux meter to measure how much light each display is emitting. And as you can see, the RC Pro controller is brighter than the iPhone 13 Pro by at least 100 lux. Now, if you're an iPhone user, this is something that you're familiar with because Apple, in its infinite wisdom, uses Face ID to unlock their phones. Mind you, using Face ID to unlock your phone on the older RC1B controller was virtually impossible because the phone cradle usually got in the way of the Face ID cameras. Plus, if you have a case on your phone, you'll have to fumble around to remove it before being able to attach it to the RC1B. So, in a way, the RCN1's phone cradle is better designed. Now, despite the horrible phone cradle on the RC1B controller, it does have more in common with the RC Pro controller than it has with the RCN1. They both have separate buttons for recording videos and taking photos, whereas the RCN1 combines those two features into one button. And you'll also notice where that combo button sits, there is a dial on the RC Pro and the RC1B. This dial is used for controlling the zoom feature on the Mavic 3. Having this dial is quite important if you do a lot of work that requires you to zoom in and out accurately and smoothly. And I also think that it gives you greater control over the 28x hybrid zoom on the Mavic 3. On the RCN1, you'll just have to make do with pinching and scrolling on the touchscreen, which isn't ideal if you have chubby fingers. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the RC Pro controller, you'll see that there is a micro SD card slot for expanding the storage because the RC Pro controller only comes with a 32GB storage, which I think is plenty unless if you plan to store videos and edit on the RC Pro controller. Now, next to the micro SD card slot is a USB C port for charging, and next to that is a HDMI port for video output. And apart from this, there are also two customizable buttons on the back of the RC Pro controller. And again, you won't get these on the RCN1. I think it's about time we got back to our range test. 
and we can report that we reached 10.6 kilometers on the RC Pro controller before the app told us to turn back. Go home. And luckily, not a minute later because there was only 8% battery when it landed. That was close, wasn't it? As for the RCN1, it got up to 9.2 kilometers before the app told us to turn back. Go home. However, the Mavic 3 had 20% battery left when it landed. Landing. Which is a good thing because nobody wants to poop in their pants while panicking for the Mavic 3 to land. Because you see, if the landing had been short, the Mavic 3 would have landed into the lake. So, in terms of range, you get about the same transmission range with these two controllers. They both had strong connections up to where they decided to turn back and the RCN1 could possibly do 10.6 kilometers or even further if the Mavic 3 had enough battery to sustain the trip. DJI claims the Mavic 3 could do 46 minutes of flight but on both occasions, it was more like 29 minutes of flight for us. The RCN1 chose to be safer and requested to come home a bit earlier, which is a good thing, while the RC Pro was a bit of a rebel, a maverick pushing the limits of the battery life and the owner's anxiety to the very edge. So if you have a Mavic 3 or Air 2S and if you're wondering if you should upgrade to the RC Pro, well I find it really hard to justify getting the RC Pro. Personally, I thought if the RC Pro could get more range than the RC N1, it would have been definitely worth it for me. But it doesn't, so here's my conclusion. If you value a super quick setup, a controller that can get you up in the air very quickly, a brighter display, not having to worry about the smartphone having sufficient charge, and you like having separate buttons for taking photos and recording videos, and you need a HDMI output and a tactile control for the zoom feature, then the RC Pro controller is the one for you. As for me, I think it's a bit of a disappointment for something so expensive, which is why I'll be selling my RC Pro controller on eBay. So those are my thoughts on the RC Pro and RC N1 controller. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing so you can stay tuned for more videos like these. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.